I'm Dr Beggs and I'm going to run you through the required practical for microbiology which has found its way into the triple science biology specification. And the interesting thing about this practical is that it is probably the first time either you or your teachers have worked with a real live bacteria culture, which is what we've got in there. It's actually E. coli, but it's a strain of E. coli that does not cause sickness, so it's a very safe strain of E. coli. But nevertheless, we have to do everything as though we were handling a dangerous microbe. So the first thing you would have done before you got this far would have been to set up your equipment, and you would have washed your hands very thoroughly, and you would have removed your work mat from the sterilising solution in which your teacher would have placed it. Before we start even handling the microbe, we're going to get the agar plates ready. Now, you've probably worked with these before in school, but the most important thing is, is that you do not open the lid unless you really have to. And when you open the lid, you're going to open the lid near your Bunsen burner. Your Bunsen burner is what is going to create a sterile area here where the square is on your workstation and everything you're going to do is going to be within that sterile area. So do not pick it up by the lid, do not pick it up by the base. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mark the agar plate into three sections. Now, if you've ever handled one of these before, you will have automatically labelled the bottom, not the lid. It's the bit where the gel is that you want to have labelled. And you're going to put a spot into the centre of each triangle, because we're going to be using that later. And now, because we are actually going to be working with the real bacteria, we're going to make sure that we've written on the side so that it can be clearly seen by anybody that we're working with E. coli. And you're also going to write today's date on it in case this plate is left in the fridge or in the incubator and somebody wants to know how old it is, because it is important that people know what is growing on these plates. And then you're going to put your initials so that yours can be found again among the whole class's work when you need them later. And now you can put your plate down, lid up. You might have heard before that you should always store them upside down. We're not actually going to store that plate for very long. We're going to leave that plate lid up for now because we're going to be working on it. And we want to place it into our area. OK, so what we're going to do next is we're going to inoculate the plate. Now, this sheet has been uh, disinfected, that's fine. But say I'd handled something in the, in the meantime, say I'd gone to write on my notes, or I'd even just lent on the rest of the desk, or any area that you haven't disinfected, then you've got to go and wash your hands. You just make sure that you are not contaminating your culture. There's actually a greater risk of you contaminating the culture here than this doing you any harm whatsoever. It's all about keeping this sterile. So, to create that lovely sterile environment, we're going to turn the Bunsen burner to blue flame. Now, you have never been allowed to be anywhere near that blue flame. You have always been warned that that is a dangerous flame. This is now creating the sterile environment that we need. So this bottle contains a small sample of the bacteria that we're going to grow. And we need to get this out of here, onto there, without any contamination. And this is where you have to have a very strong little finger. So what we're going to do, this is sterile, this is a sterile pipette. It's been sterilised by being wrapped in uh, normal greaseproof paper and just heated in an oven. It's sterile inside and out. It's the inside of it that matters to me, not the outside. So I can handle it in order to put the bulb on the end of it, but I do not want to handle the pointy end, I want to handle the blunt end. And I was quite careful by opening it to make sure that I'm going to remove it by the blunt end. It is sterile inside and it's sterile on the outside, except where my fingers are now. Of course, I've washed my hands. So you put the bulb over it and now this is the clever bit. You're now going to hold that with your thumb and your first finger so you can use it because you need this hand to hold the bottle and this hand to open the bottle. So the first thing you do is you loosen the bottle using your little finger holding on to the bottle. You could start to loosen it before you pick it up with both hands. If it was stiff, you haven't got a problem there. Turn the bottle, not the lid, and you are going to flame the lid. You are not going to flame your pipette. So flame the lid gently through the Bunsen burner, and now the lid is sterile, 
and you're going to take up about one mil, that's probably about it, of the solution. It's in a sterile pipette, it's a sterile solution except for the E. coli. I might want to use this bottle again, so I'm going to flame the lid again and I'm going to put the lid on without burning my hand. When you do this yourself, it's your hand. Now, I've got my agar plate the right way up so that this is the lid. I'm going to open the lid for the minimum amount of time and squirt my culture of bacteria onto the plate. Minimum opening, minimum time, squirt, close. And now my pipette goes into my discard bottle. So at the moment, my bacteria culture is just lying in the middle of my plate, so I need to spread it. So your lovely lab technicians who've been working in the background to prepare this for you will have wrapped a glass spreader in greaseproof paper and it's been in the oven. So I'm only going to hold it on this end, that end is sterile. I don't want to go anywhere near that end at all. And I want to use this spreader to spread that liquid out over the entire agar plate. So, blue flame. Lid off pointing towards the flame, with as little time open as possible, spread the bacteria over every single part of the plate. And this is one of those little jobs where if you don't do it correctly, we will know because the bacteria won't grow right to the very edges. So there we are, and close. The other thing that we're going to know, straight into the discard bottle, and I'll add the burk onto that now, the other thing that we're going to know is whether you push too hard, because if you break the surface of the agar, it's going to be very, very obvious. We want to make sure that none of the bacteria are going to survive, so I'm going to pour some Vircon into my beaker, and now any bacteria that were left on the spreader, any bacteria that were left in the pipette, in 10 minutes, those bacteria will be killed. We know that the whole of the surface of the agar is covered in the culture of bacteria, and those bacteria are going to start to grow. And when they grow, the colonies are going to merge together and we're going to have what is called a lawn of bacteria growing over the agar plate. And that will make the surface of the agar plate cloudy, just like the water with the culture in is very slightly cloudy. You'll be able to see where the bacteria are growing. So what we're going to do now is a bit of an experiment. We're going to see, can we stop those bacteria from growing? And what we're going to use is we're going to use a disc that has been soaked and then dried, but it actually has an antibiotic on it. And that sort of antibiotic, this one's actually streptomycin, the sort of antibiotic that you would be given if you went to your doctor and your doctor gave you an antibiotic in order to kill bacteria. We're also going to use one of my favourite substances, because I like the smell of it, is tea tree. And we're also going to use a commercial antiseptic. So this is the sort of thing that you see sold in shops for sterilising surfaces and sterilising uh, hands and things and cuts. So we're going to try to see what is best, the antibiotic or the tea tree or the antiseptic. So. Everything now, we need to make sure that we are still sterile and we also need to make sure that we know which disc is which. So I'm going to call these one, two, three. So on my plate, I'm going to pick it up without taking the lid off. I'm going to write one, two, three, so that I know where I'm going to put my little discs. So one's going there. Two's going there, three's going there. One, two, three. So we're going to have to open this again. So we're going to turn this back onto blue flame so we create our lovely area of sterile air. I'm going to start with the antibiotic disc and we're going to turn area number one towards the flame, open, pop it in on the dot and just push it down just a little bit so that it stays there because you don't want it to fall off, because I'll show you the problem you would have if you don't push it down in a minute. Now I'm going to take a disc of paper, I'm going to soak it in tea tree oil. So that's tea tree, rotate my plate, so that position two is facing the flame, open up just for the minimum amount of time, put the disc down, push it down so it stays, 
and close the lid. Closing the lid as soon as possible as you do not want any contamination from around getting in. So now my third little one, this is number three. Soak the disc in the commercial antiseptic. Rotate the agar plate. Open, down, press, close, sterile. We need to incubate that and it's got to be incubated for long enough for the bacteria to grow but not so long that the whole thing is completely covered and just looks sort of generally unpleasant. What we want to see is whether these discs will kill the bacteria and we'll know they've killed the bacteria if we have a clear ring around the discs. I wonder which one's going to be best. The one that is best is the one that's going to have the widest ring. But is it going to be the commercial antibiotic or the tea tree or the probably quite expensive antiseptic? We're going to have to wait for a little bit to see. We need to make sure that that lid doesn't come off. I'm just going to turn this Bunsen back to yellow and push it away. We don't need the Bunsen burner on blue flame anymore because we no longer need to have sterile surroundings because now our bacteria are sealed in the agar plate. We've got to make sure that the lid doesn't come off. So this is where the clear tape is going to come in. I'm going to seal the lid onto the Petri dish with just two pieces of sellotape on either side. Now it might be tempting to think that what you need to do is to seal it all the way around so the bacteria can't get out. But if you seal it all the way around so the bacteria can't get out, then oxygen can't get in. And the E. coli that we put there won't grow, but anything else that has contaminated this plate will grow. And anything that's got in it from your hands, from the desk, from the air, is likely to be an unpleasant bacteria and anaerobic conditions they will do really well in and the plate will start to get very smelly indeed. So now we're going to store it and you're going to give this back to your teacher and your teacher is going to store this in an oven at 30 degrees centigrade until the bacteria has started to grow when you'll be allowed to look at it again. But we always store agar plates upside down. Now this is a nervous moment because hopefully when I turn it upside down my discs don't fall off. And hopefully when you turn it upside down, your discs don't fall off. There we are. Success. So that now is upside down. The reason we do that is any condensation will be on the lid, not on the agar, and it won't flow around and move all the bacteria away from the surface. And so that goes to your teacher, and your teacher will put it in the oven, and they'll know it's yours because you've got your name on it. They'll know when it went in because you put the date on it. They'll know what's growing on it because you wrote the name of the bacteria on it. After that has gone, your job is to disinfect your table so if you have accidentally spilt any E. coli, you're not going to spread the E. coli around to the next person who comes in after you. So a couple of days have passed and we need to return to our agar plate to see how things are developing. What do you notice, first of all, if you have a look, you can see that where the agar was completely clear, it's now cloudy. Each part of that cloud is due to individual bacteria that you have spread evenly across the plate, dividing by binary fission to produce tiny little colonies, which we are seeing now as a cloudy area on the plate. What you will see is that there are clear areas where the bacteria have not grown. These are the clear areas where we put down our little discs. This disc here is the antibiotic, the commercial antibiotic, and the other two were the cleaners that we chose. This one was actually the tea tree. And you'll see that there is actually a larger radius clear area around the tea tree. The reason for these clear areas is that as the bacteria were growing on the rest of the plate, they were not able to grow in the centre around the discs because the antiseptic or the antibiotic was killing the bacteria. Now, what can we do with this data? To analyse this data, what we could do is to measure the diameter of these clear areas. That would give us a direct comparison of these different treatments in terms of how they are able to kill bacteria. And we could do this for these plates and we could repeat it with another plate in order to get repeated results or we could share results between the class. There are a few things that we need to consider though. Was this actually a fair test? The commercial antibiotic was dry. The other two had been dipped in a liquid. 
Were those liquids of the same viscosity? How has the antibiotic got through the agar? So we need to consider that the only way in which the antibiotic could have got through the agar is through diffusion through the agar gel, whereas the other two have they purely diffused out from the discs, or could it have been the spreading of the wet substance over the surface of the disc? So yes, in this test there is a difference between them, but does that test actually correctly reflect the ability of these substances to kill the bacteria. One thing we need to consider when we do investigations like this is how can our results be applied to the wider world? In what circumstances would we do an investigation like this? Perhaps we would be interested to see which one of these would be better as a treatment to prevent the growth of bacteria that was causing an illness. So let's think. The commercial antibiotic is very effective. Uh, it's the second best of the three tests that we've done. This one, the tea tree, absolutely, definitely the best. But what we need to do is we need to ask ourselves, if you've got a sore throat or a stomach bug that's being caused by this bacteria, would you really want to be drinking tea tree? So this practical, which we've just demonstrated, is uh, quite a complex practical, which is part of the new uh, science GCSE. If you want to have um, any extra training with any parts of the new science specification, then Malmesbury School, uh, we're actually the home of the Avon Teaching School Alliance, and we run various courses which will support teachers and technicians with presenting practical science just like this. If you want to know more about the work of the Avon Teaching School Alliance, then follow the link in the description.